Hi guys, today I want to talk a bit about Render Boost. Because with that plugin, you can easily speed up your rendering process without losing any visible quality most of the time. And that's because this plugin can interpolate frames between your existing ones. And so you only have to render every second frame or even less to get your animation with the full frame rate. Before we start, there are two different versions of this add-on. The normal version costs $10 and this is only for the frame interpolation and it doesn't support GPU acceleration. If you want to have that, you have to buy RenderBoost Pro, which also supports the GPU and also have some other additional features like denoising or upscaling, which I will also show you later. Basically it's pretty simple, first you have to install it of course and after that you have to go into the add-on preferences and then click on install dependencies. This can take a couple of minutes and then you can start. Then you can find the add-on panel in the output tab under the post processing and if we open it here you can see all settings you can change. You can now either tick automatic interpolation so that the interpolation performs directly after the rendering or you can untick it and choose here a folder manually of already rendered images. If this option is ticked then it just takes the directory of the output. So if I change the output directory to only attic for example and then untick it here then as you can see it's already changed so it's uh, synchronized with the output directory directly. Normally I would also leave sync step with multi ticked because with multi you can control how much frames shall be interpolated and for example if I set the step to 2 then only every second frame will be rendered but in return it interpolates a frame in between and so at the end you have the exact same frame rate. With this button you can also add additional buffer if you want. So what does it mean? For example if we render only every second frame and start with frame 1 then in this case frame 59 would be the last frame and it would skip frame 60 and because the problem is that it can only interpolate frames in between and not after the last frame. So in this case we would also need to render frame 61 that it can interpolate frame 60. And for that um, here you first have to uncheck automatic interpolation and then click on add buffer. And then as you can see it expands the timeline to the needed frames. Now let's render some comparison videos. The first one will be without render boost so that every frame will be rendered. Then with step 2 so that only every second frame will be rendered. And then also step 4 and step 6 so that only every sixth frame will be rendered. And did you notice some differences here? Yeah, with step 4 and step 6, some objects are wobbling a bit, but most of the time it looks quite good and with step 2 it's nearly perfect. I can't really see a big difference in comparison to the original version. And it's crazy that even the wheel spokes from the tree cycle remain consistent. Only if you have very fast movements and much motion blur it can cause some problems, like here. In the pro version you also have some additional settings like upscaling, denoising, converting the image sequences directly into a video or making individual shots. But let's start with the upscaling function. If we tick it, then you can see all settings you can change. Um, normally I would leave sync resolution tick because also if we untick it nothing really happens. And here you can change the upscaling factor to a maximum of 8, uh, we leave it to 2 and then you can choose for the priority between quality and speed. But keep in mind you can use the upscaling function only in combination with the interpolation so you can't only upscale a video. And now here's a comparison video between the normal version and the upscaled version and as you can see there's slightly a difference. 
But keep in mind that this setting also changes the resolution scale here. Because the idea is that the end resolution will be the same. But you can also apply it on already rendered frames like I did before. So let's push this a bit further and we set the upscaling factor to 4 so that the resolution scale is only 25% and now we will render it new. And yeah, it has its limitations as you can see, so don't expect too much. If the output resolution is just too low, then it can't do some black magic to save everything in post. Now let's also test the denoising function. So if we click on it, you can change the denoise strength here if you want, but we will leave it to the default of 5 and we'll make a test render. As you can see, it's quite washed out and not so good like the open image denoiser or optics. So normally I wouldn't use this function till now. Output video is self-explaining as said before. And then we also have the shot section. And this is good if you have different camera movements in one shot, like these for example. The idea is that you can have a different multi-value depending on the current camera movement so that you can tweak it for every single shot individually. And with that you can also prevent that it doesn't interpolate a strange frame between these different camera movements. You can also click on auto-gen shots so that it automatically tries to find the best settings for you but that doesn't always work so mostly you would have to make it manually like here. As you can see it defines only one shot instead of two. But you can set the accuracy for the shot detection higher and then it should calculate it more precise but it takes way longer. But in this case it didn't really help so yeah normally you would have to do it manually I guess. So yeah, what's the conclusion? Render Boost is pretty good at interpolating frames directly in Blender and also the upscaling function in Render Boost Pro is pretty useful if you don't set the value too high. But don't expect black magic here. And the denoising function isn't just there where it would have to be at the moment. And also the shots are pretty useful, but most of the time you have to set it manually. So most of the time you should be able to at least have your rendering times with this plugin and I think that's a pretty nice thing. I hope you liked it and if so please leave a thumbs up or comment below and then I see you in the next video.